Immediately after the end of World War II, the victorious powers began to interrogate the functional elites of the National Socialist State. When it came to German weapons programs, fighter jets and underground weapons factories, the name Hans Kammler was mentioned again and again. At the final stage of the war, the SS Obergruppenführer and the head of Section C of the main directorate of economics of the SS were given extensive powers over the production and use of the latest weapons. The Allies knew about Kammler, although they did not know everything about his underground kingdom of shadows. His role in the Holocaust and the massive use of concentration camp prisoners on construction sites. They searched intensively for him, but according to the generally accepted narrative just a few years ago, they came too late. Kammler allegedly evaded his guilt and committed suicide in Bohemia on May 9, 1945. However, doubts about this version were never completely quelled, especially since his body was never found and all his personal documents were missing. Hans Kammler Hans Kammler was an SS Obergruppenführer, responsible for Nazi civil engineering projects and its top secret Pinta weapon program. He oversaw the construction of various Nazi concentration camps, and at the end of World War II, he was tasked with directing the V-2 rocket and emergency fighter programs. Camber disappeared in May 1945, during the last days of the war. There was much speculation about his fate. He was the most devilish. Kammler began his Nazi career modestly, working on construction projects for the Air Ministry. However, having joined the party in 1931, he was a tough ideologist. In 1934, Kammler wrote a treatise on German expansion to the East, where the population would be dominated by ethnic German colonists. With a doctorate in civil engineering, Kammler believed that conquest would require killing 20 to 30 million people. To expand the scope of the Holocaust, Kammler moved from traditional construction projects to the implementation of genocidal architecture. In particular, he oversaw the transformation of Auschwitz-Birkenau into an extermination camp where one million Jews were killed. In building the Birkenau extermination camp next to Auschwitz, Kammler, whose signature appears on the surviving work orders, demonstrated amazing efficiency. For example, he decided to turn underground morgues into gas chambers by adding a small freight elevator to transport corpses to crematoria. No detail in Birkenau was too small for Kammler to be involved. From the size of the prison barracks to the perimeter fences, the SS officer was nicknamed the Cloud of Dust due to his frequent visits to the camp and his relentless pace. His work was distributed far and wide and duplicated throughout the Reich we could have had a different outcome. After turning Auschwitz-Birkenau into the largest death camp of the Reich, Kammler partnered with SS Chief Heinrich Himmler in creating a secret weapon. Ultimately, the so-called rocket program, V2, became the crown jewel of Kammler's slave labor empire. The V2 rockets made a huge difference. They were so advanced that they didn't look like they belonged on a World War T battlefield. The V2 rockets each 46 feet long, built by Kammler's workers, reached 55 miles in the atmosphere of northern France and landed in London with terrifying explosions. Supersonic rockets were produced in huge quantities and could cover distances of up to 300 miles. Fortunately for the Allies, the German V-2 rockets were not ready for use until October 1944, four months after the D-Day invasion. The Nazi system prioritized too many disparate projects at once, resulting in relatively few of them being implemented. We knew the Germans were testing these missiles, Reuter said. If they had gotten them to the launch pads in time, the war might have had a different outcome. Someone came and cleaned up the files. As part of Operation Paperclip, U.S. authorities sought to capture German technicians for use in the space program. Beginning in 1945, Approximately 5,000 German scientists and technicians were brought to the United States, including seriously depraved individuals involved in the Holocaust and the use of slave labor. Despite the stain left by Nazi scientists, the arrival of rocket scientists such as Werner von Braun to the United States was considered vital as tensions with the Soviet Union grew. German scientists helped the U.S. create an intercontinental ballistic missile and, 
ultimately, beat Russia to the moon landing. Kamler, with his experience building death camps and using slave labor, was never a candidate for rehabilitation in the United States. Instead, Kamler believes he gave American forces what they wanted, and the former SS general was allowed to flee Germany along the notorious Rat Trail from Europe along which thousands of Nazi war criminals fled to Argentina and other countries. In addition to Reuter's hypothesis that Kamler fled to South America, there is also the possibility that he was used as an intelligence asset in Europe, like Klaus Barbie or other people we used and sent, Reuter said, adding that even the Israeli Mossad or the Simon Wiesenthal Center were hunting Kamler. In 2012, the U.S. Department of Justice responded to Reuter's request to review Kamler's records by sending the author a set of highly redacted documents. Seven years later, before The Hidden Nazi had even been published, Reuter's made another Freedom of Information Act request and was told the government had no data on Kamler. As one archivist said, it was like someone had come in and cleaned out the files. <laughs>